Good morning. Welcome to Midway United Methodist Church. My name is Amanda Lane. I am one of the pastors here. It is a pleasure to welcome you to worship. Those of you who are worshiping here in person and those of you who are worshiping with us online. I'd like to encourage everyone to register your attendance. You can do that with the, uh, the tear out in your bulletin or you can scan the QR code that's also in your bulletin. That will take you to our What's Happening page and there you can register your attendance and find out what's happening. Additionally, if you are a first time guest with us this morning, we welcome you, we thank you for joining us for this special day. Uh, in front of you, there is a blue pew card and we would ask that you fill that out and place it in the offering plate as it comes around a little later in the service. A couple of things to highlight about what's going on in the life and the ministry of the church this week. Um, throughout the month of June, we will be collecting canned goods to support Meals by Grace. If you go to the website, you can find um, the needed items, the canned goods that they uh, would like to have. You can put the canned goods either in the um, gathering area or the welcome center over um, across the street. You guys have heard us talking about it for a long time. Alpharetta Mission Project is coming up next month, and we want you to participate. If you would, uh, if you're interested in participating, go to midwayumc.org backslash AMP, A-M-P, and you can sign up there. We never want anything to be cost prohibitive, anything that we offer here. So if you have questions, if you need a little support, you can talk to Nate. He'll be happy to uh, fill you in on everything. And finally, Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. I can already see some of you who are helping are a little weary. Vacation Bible School is the best week of the year. It's also the most exhausting week of the year. Um, we wanna thank you so much for all the support you've already given us. During, um, as you come forward for communion, um, when you receive your elements, as you walk back to your seats, here on the front pew are prayer cards. We would ask that you pick up at least three prayer cards. We have over 300 people that will be here. That's uh, campers and, um, and adults and youth volunteers. But pick up one of these prayer cards so that you can pray for the names listed on that card. These are the names of all of the people who will be here this week, and we hope, that, um, we hope that we have a good week, and we would love for you to cover us in prayer. As we continue our worship, would you prepare your hearts and your minds?
Would you stand in mind, body, or spirit for our call to worship? This is printed in your bulletin. Trust in the Lord and do good. May the Lord give strength to the people. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is our refuge and strength. Would you pray with me? New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you would turn in your hymnal to number 698 as we sing together, God of the Ages. <laughs> confession and pardon. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way of peace. Come into the brokenness of our lives and land with your healing love. Help us to be willing to bow before you in true repentance and to bow to one another in real forgiveness. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, melt our hearts and hearts and consume the pride and prejudice which separate us. Fill us, O oh Lord, with your perfect love, which casts out our fear, and bind us together in that unity which you share with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us remission of all our sins, true repentance, 
amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. ushers come forward, let us go to God in a prayer of thanksgiving. God, we thank you so much for all that you have given us, for all that you offer to us, Lord. God, in this time, I pray that you would receive our offerings, receive them and use them to multiply your will and your work. In your name we pray, amen.
Let's sing together. pastoral prayer and Lord's Prayer, I have a prayer today that I want to use. It's going to allow you an opportunity to have a moment of silent reflection and prayer. So I will pause for brief moments throughout the prayer this morning. Will you join me now as we go to God in a word of prayer? Holy Spirit, Creator, in the beginning you moved over the waters. From your breath, all creation drew life. Without you, life turns to dust. Bring to mind where you have created life this week. For these we give you praise. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit Counselor, by your inspiration, the prophets spoke and acted in faith. You clothed them in power to be bearers of your word. In the quiet of this moment, counsel us as to where we have lived out of our brokenness and caused harm to you, to ourselves, to others, or even to our earth. Holy Spirit, hear now our prayers of quiet repentance. Holy Spirit, sanctifier, you created us children of God. You make us the living temple of your presence. You intercede within us with sighs too deep for words. We receive your forgiveness. Bring to mind ways to seek reconciliation in relationships that we have that are strained or broken.
give us the strength and courage to follow through. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit power, you came as fire to Jesus' disciples. You gave them voice before the rulers of this world. Bring to mind the name of one person to whom you are sending us this week that we may share the words and action that come from your fire and may we witness to the reality of Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. God of power, may the boldness of your Spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your Spirit lead us. And may the gifts of your Spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. And will you hear us now, O Lord, as we come together to join in that same prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it warms my heart to see a full chapel this morning. Yeah. On a summer Sunday, what brought y'all out today? I want to recognize a few people here this morning. Uh, not that I'm not happy to see all of you, but uh, I see Mike and Dana Dalton are with us. They're former members and uh, welcomed me when I came six years ago. And I've actually been thinking about you all this week, and I have a gift for you in my car, so don't leave without getting it. Also, um, Reba Moon is present, having all 101 years of her. I'm sorry, 79. 79. And last but not least, my husband, Herson, is here as well. Our scripture lesson today comes to us from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the twelfth verse. Hear now God's word to us this day. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you, esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks, in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the word of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Beloved, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all of them. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Actor Paul Hogan of Crocodile Dundee fame once co-hosted the Academy Awards. In his iconic Aussie voice, he reminded his fellow actors in accepting their rewards to practice the three G's, be grateful, be gracious, and get off. Now that's good advice, not only for Oscar winners whose tendency we all know is to drone on and on, but also for anyone who is moving on, including Methodist pastors like me who are leaving one flock to serve another. Be grateful, be gracious, and get off. You know, a lot of pastors are good at the first two, but not so good at the get-off part. As United Methodist ministers, we are to go where we are sent, which also means leaving where we have left, something that I'm all too adept at, having served 10 churches since seminary. Now, this doesn't mean that I don't grieve. I do very much with each leave compounded by the one before it, this being the nature of grief. But if grief is the price we pay for love, then it is as sweet as it is sorrowful. I love you all and will miss you. Thank you for loving me and accepting me with all my flaws, forgiving me for my failures, and for caring for my family and me, especially during my mother's illness and death. When I think of farewells, I think of Paul, whom in his quest to spread the gospel was always saying goodbye to churches, going from one church to the next and planning new ones as he went. Centuries later, John Wesley would instruct his preachers not to stay in one place more than is strictly necessary. In this, Paul was ahead of his time. Today, we keep up with those we are separated with by phone or email or social media. Paul kept up with his churches by writing letters, that lost art, you know, of prior generations. Though I would hasten to add that our card ministry seems to have beautifully resurrected it and offers encouragement to many, including my staff and myself. Here are all the cards I have received from you. I got that Longenberger basket at Goodwill, just for the record. (laughs) I I didn't pay full price. There's a lot of love in that basket. First Thessalonians was written around 50 AD. It is considered the earliest of Paul's letters, and it's therefore the, the oldest book in our New Testament. The letter is written in response to a report that Paul receives from his protege, Timothy, on his a return from his visit to the church. In the typical Hellenistic form of letter writing, Paul would sign off his letters with some general instructions, a wish for well-being, and a benediction. In this, the final section of his letter to the Thessalonians, Paul gives the community of believers a list of instructions to guide their life together. 
Respect those who labor among you. Be at peace among yourselves. Be patient with all. Do not repay evil for evil, but always seek to do good. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. Did you get all that? You got that down? You know, it's like Paul is rattling off a list of Ten Commandments for the church as if he's running out of time and trying to squeeze every nugget of wisdom he can in before signing off. He sounds a lot like a parent dropping their kid off at camp or college. You know, we spout off random pieces of advice. We want our kids to know, to be sure that they remember now that they are going to be on their own. Remember now, nothing good happens after midnight. Don't wash whites and reds together, which is especially good advice if you're going to Georgia or Auburn. And last but not least, by the way, Stetson Hatters uh, beat Auburn yesterday in baseball. And last but not least, what? Don't forget to call home. Paul's list sounds just as random, but it's actually very intentional, though much of this is literally lost in the translation. In the Greek, his list is poetic with rhyme and rhythm and alliteration. It's made up of short, pithy sayings, small enough that each could be put on the church sign out front. The apostle writes them in this way so that his largely illiterate audience would be able to memorize them and call them to mind when they need to remind each other how to behave as the body of Christ. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to give a 10-point sermon today. Those non-denominants from the mega churches who are really just closet Baptists aren't going to beat us to the mill house and Moe's. I'm just going to highlight a few. First, Paul writes about the treatment of leaders. We appeal to you in respect to respect those who labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and admonish you, esteem them very highly in love because of their work. You know, we live in a day when the distrust of leaders is at an all-time high, and perhaps for good reason. With news running at the speed of internet, we are bombarded daily by the human flaws and failures of our leaders including religious leaders. Because of this, we are more prone to be suspect and to criticize our leaders than we are to support and encourage. I'm grateful for the respect that you have shown me as your pastor, and I know that you will show Jason and continue to show Amanda the same kind of respect. Did you know that being a pastor entails 13 different competencies? 13. No human can possibly possess all of these, which is why it's good to have pastors come and go, because we possess different gifts which can benefit the church. I encourage you to always give Jason the benefit of the doubt. Assume good intentions, that the good of the church is forefront in his mind. I know that this will be his foremost concern because I have known him for many years, and I know him to be a man of utmost integrity 
and a faithful servant of Christ. Paul tells us that leaders are due respect because, one, of their hard work and the character of their work, and two, because of love, which is the source of the community's life by the power of the Holy Spirit. I heard about a bishop who was invited to preach at a church. Only three people showed up. The bishop asked the pastor if he had given notice of the bishop's visit. No, said the pastor, but word seems to have gotten around anyway. <laughs> Jason is worthy of your respect because Bishop Deese has appointed him and given him charge over you in the Lord. So number one is respect your leaders. Paul also tells the church to be at peace among yourselves. We've been through a lot together, and I mean a lot. I was appointed here after numerous people had left the church because of broken trust with leaders. Then we had a little thing called the pandemic, followed by the departure and retirement of key staff. Then the suicide of John, our much beloved affable worship leader. As if all this wasn't enough to shoulder, we had a little denominational conflict all along the way. There's no sugar, sugar coating yet, my brothers and sisters. The last six years have been a hard road to hoe. So I ask you to forgive me for getting weary and probably a little depressed in the process. Amanda has led us in a mental health focus this month in the wake of John's suicide and uh, Reverend Jarvis's son, Thomas. Allow me to state the obvious. Preachers aren't immune to mental illness, and church politics certainly don't provide a panacea. There's an old saying, if you have three people in the room, you will have at least five opinions. <laughs> it's unrealistic to think that there's not going to be any conflict, but there can be peace despite differences because peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of love. Let me say that again. Peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of love. Peace has less to do with everyone thinking the same or being of the same opinion, which would be a very boring life if we did. Rather, peace is a matter of whether we stir up discontent because of those differences or create a gracious space where we can respect one another and love one another despite or because of those differences. We are called to be at peace with each other because we are brothers and sisters in Christ, bound together by God's love and empowered by the Holy Spirit with a shared mission to love God and people and to make disciples. John Wesley famously said, though we cannot all think alike, may we not love alike. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to err, I pray that I am going to err on the side of love. One, be respectful of your leaders. Two, be at peace among yourselves. Peace is not only a byproduct of love, it is also an outcome of patience. 
Be patient with all of them. Not just some of them, all of them, says Paul, including the idlers, you know, those we might call pew sitters, the faint-hearted, those who are immature in the faith, and the weak, those who for various reasons can't pull their share of the load. I'll never forget finding an award coin at home, you know, one of those that a, a teacher might give a student for above and beyond behavior. Well, the coin was for patience. So I was curious who the coin in our family belonged to. So I asked them about it. And our teenager quipped, I don't know anyone in this family who deserves that award. (laughs) It may come as a surprise to you, but patience is not my strong suit. It is, though, one of the fruits of the Spirit, so I urge you to pursue it and practice it with one another. Be respectful of your leaders. Be at peace with one another. Be patient with one another. To these, Paul added this famous verse, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Always rejoice together in life and in worship, preferably in person, if at all possible. Pray without ceasing for each other, for your clergy and staff, for for Midway, for our nation, for our world. And give thanks in all circumstances because we know that God is faithful and good all the time. Paul signed off his letter with this benediction. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he powers it up by adding, the one who calls you is faithful and will do this. The aim of the Christian life is not heaven, it's sanctification. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, says Paul. Our God is faithful, so we can trust that God will transform us into the likeness of Christ as we faithfully live into God's call on each of our lives. That was Paul's prayer for them, and it is my prayer for you. Jesus himself gave a lengthy farewell to his disciples in the Gospel of John. On the night before his death, after humbly washing his disciples' feet and eating one last meal together as we will be doing so today, Jesus prayed for their unity and promised to send them the Holy Spirit to comfort and to guide and to empower them for ministry. Because the Holy Spirit is with us, And because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we can trust an unknown future to a known God and look with expectation for the God of resurrection to do a new thing in our midst. Now it springs forth, saying the psalmist, do you not perceive it? So thank you, Midway, for allowing me to be your pastor, for sharing with me the most tenderest moments of life, baptisms and confirmation, weddings and hospitalizations, and funerals. For service shared in mission, 5Ks, packing events, or disaster work, just to name a few. For the music we have sung together in praise of God and how wonderful to have the organ in here before I left. And the joy 
of celebrating our Lord's birth and resurrection together and breaking bread together. And of hundreds of children laughing, singing, and learning about Jesus in our preschool and our VBS like they will this week. Thanks for the memories, including an unforgettable trip to the Holy Land during a pandemic. In March 2020, Herzen and I led that trip. While we were there, the world began to shut down. Our guide ran us around like chickens with our heads cut off, trying to get us all the sites before they were closed. Tour groups were leaving the country, and there were no groups replacing them. So as the days went by, there were less and less tourists in country. On our last day in Jerusalem, on Sunday morning, we went early to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, built on the site where Jesus was crucified, buried in resurrection. Now, ordinarily, the church would be packed with worshipers, and we would have to wait in very long lines in order to enter. But there were so few tourists that we walked right in and were able to stand smack dab in the middle of the church with a clear view to each chapel that came off from the dome. And while we were standing there, worship began in each of those different chapels, in different languages and different music and customs, and it was a a, a cacophony of sound, you know, echo through the vaulted ceiling. But instead of it being hard on the ears, it was a beautiful thing and comforting. Though the world was in chaos, a peace washed over me and tears came to my eyes. For there in that moment, we caught a glimpse of the kingdom of God here on earth as it will be in heaven. All would be well because our God is faithful and his steadfast love endures forever. So now, my dear brothers and sisters, let me close by saying I'm grateful to God for you and for your love and for the ministry we've shared. And I'm grateful for the faithful, competent, hardworking staff with whom I've been blessed to serve. I hope that I have been as gracious to you as you have been to me. And now this, my beloved, is where I get off. Let us pray. God of peace and love, you who are patient with us beyond belief, thank you for Midway and for the gift of ministry we have shared together. Thank you for the challenges that have caused us to grow and the victories that have caused us to give praise to you. Thank you for lives touched and transformed by the power of your spirit. Lord, as we follow your call on our lives, help us to be respectful and supportive of those who have taken on the mantle of leadership. Enable us to be at peace with one another, even when we disagree, and increase the fruit of patience among us that we might be sanctified fully and be perfected in love in this life and be joined forever with you and each other in the life to come. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
So this morning as we prepare ourselves for a time of Holy Communion, I want to give you just a couple of reminders. Uh, the first one is that our ushers will come and direct you on how to come down and receive communion this morning. Uh, if you desire or need to be served at your seat, if you would just let our ushers know so that we can come and serve you. And then lastly, as Pastor Amanda mentioned, uh, very, uh, right at the very top of the service, we have the prayer cards down in this front pew. So after you uh, receive communion, take communion, we would encourage you to please make sure you take at least three of those cards with you before you return to your seat. Will you join me now? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We join me now as we go to God in a word of prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
will you please stand for an order of farewell for a pastor? It's on the insert in your bulletin. And you find the insert. I thank you, the members and uh, friends of Midway United Methodist Church, for the love and support you have shown me while I've ministered among you. I'm grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made. As I leave, I carry with me all that I've learned here. I accept your gratitude and forgiveness, and I forgive you, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. I release you from turning to me and depending on me. I encourage your continuing ministry here, and will pray for you and for Pastor Jason, Pastor Amanda, and staff. Let us pray together. Eternal God, whose steadfast love for us is from everlasting to everlasting. We give you thanks for cherished memories and commend one another into your care as we move in new directions. Keep us one in your love forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you would turn in your hymnal to number 383 as we close today with This is a Day of New Beginnings. Thank you. a couple of quick announcements, some direction uh, for us here after this service. Um, Pastor Jenny's going to make her way out at the end of her benediction. She'll be out uh, beyond these doors here if you'd like to, to greet her before you go. Uh, but we want to invite everybody to please come uh, for the reception that will be happening in the uh, gathering area in the building right behind us. So that will occur right after this service. But before we go, we have one small gift we wanted to give to Jenny. And in case you couldn't stay uh, for the reception, we hope you'll maybe get a chance to come look at it now. But this is what is known as a name frame. And so you notice on here is Jenny's name, which is in the center of this frame. We do have the Stetson logo uh, in the O, just so you know. <laughs> but around this frame are probably 35, 40 words that describe to our, from our leadership, the church council, who they thought Jenny was or who they think Jenny is. And so... Um, 
lot of these words, like Jenny said, I've known her for a very long time. 25 years. I don't know if she wanted me to say that or not, but at least 25 years. She baptized my 22-year-old daughter, and it has been a pleasure to get to serve with you these past six months, and I'm thankful for that, thankful for your leadership, and I would give this to you, but I need to take it because i got to put it in the gathering area, but you can hang on to it for just a brief moment and read. I just, thank you. Thank you so much. I I have to say, though, it says patient here. (laughs) I'll work at it. (laughs) Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Now may God go before you to guide you. May God go behind you to direct you. May God go beside you to befriend you. May God rest above you to protect you. May God rest below you to uphold you. And may God dwell within you to comfort you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.